Yes. Oh, yes. Uh-oh. What? Uh, it's just my headphones, I guess. All right. Uh, oh, no. Sounds like someone has uh, stretched foil over uh, each cup of the earphone. You get a nice reverberation thing Let's going keep here. Keep that to yourself, Ray. Let's go. Come All right. On. Where are you Mike. going, Drew? You're not going that. anywhere. He actually looks hurt tonight. Who, Mike? Yeah. He's like, I prepared everything. I, I spent the last... Look at right. I don't know what you hear. I, don't, I, did, I didn't hear anything. All right, before. come in here. Okay. All right. Uh, you'll hear what I hear. Well, I'm not blaming you, Mike. Please. It's because your name's Mike I'm and just, you're the I'm engineer. I'm worried about your hearing. All right. Phone number for uh, Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Now, uh, Nora Dunn, who uh, you probably best remember from Saturday Night Live, is not going to be here tonight. Uh, oh, really? No. Nobody told me that till this second. Not true. What do you care? Like, you need to know. Oh, I was looking forward to that. I was, too. She's a uh, she's a funny woman, and she's a feisty woman, and uh, we probably could have had a good time with her. But uh, It's kind of weird that I find out about who the guests are or are not going to be at the same moment the listeners do. Uh, let's be fair. There's, I think, a six-second delay. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike, put these on. I'd love to. All right. All right. Uh, Drew, I'm, the, uh, I'm modulating properly. Test one, two, test one, two. Time to buy a new pair of headphones. Oh, please. Uh, do Americans make headphones? Uh, I swear to God, how many times have those things been back to the shop? Twice. Uh, what, uh, what, what are we using them? Are we using them in the garden uh, when I'm not using them? <laughs> what is going on? I, I, do, uh, I barely uh, do two hours a night of radio. For Christ's sake. All right. Uh, anyway, thank you, Engineer Mike. I can't believe those things got to go back to the shop again. Well, don't feel bad. Drew's gone through the two cords to his headphones. Well, Drew plays on uh, with his cord. That's uh, that's Drew's problem. And it wasn't a pun, but uh, so take, the it, take it any way you want. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's pretend we're doing a radio show yeah, for just exactly. one second here. Tell Drew. me. I'm uh, curious to know what happened. I, I have no idea. She had something come up. She's uh, rescheduled. All right. Uh, now, that's, uh, yeah, and Drew, like, you see, here's how you know. Uh, Drew has no part in this show and should get paid at least a third, maybe less, of what I get. Because he'll come in not knowing what who the guest is, not caring particularly who the guest is, and just sit down. Meanwhile, I'm uh, feverishly going through a bio. And uh, that brings me to my next point. Drew and I are going to be on a uh, new show called Vibe. Uh, it's not going to be our show. We're just going to be guests on it. This is... Uh, a KCOP thing, Channel 13 out UPN, here. UPN. Oh, UPN. Yeah. What's KCOP, the yeah. local? Yeah. Okay. Or what they called it 30 years ago. Well, go ahead. It's, uh, but it's not the dubba 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 no. uh, WB. Right. Right. Oh, remember that humiliation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my, I will not do that. Uh, when Drew and I thought we were going to be on a regular uh, TV station and we had to do these promos, uh, it's, uh, all right, Adam, let's try it again. Uh, it's a dubba dubba. Dubba, 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 dubba. Uh, how many, how many, dubba, where, how many dubbas am I on? Is this a gag? Where's Alan Fun? Are we just? Uh, is this a thing where we can just get tapes of like quasi celebrities making a holes of themselves? Uh, I know what this WB campaign is, by the way. It, here's it was cooked up by the uh, brass and the, at the network. You for, know how it works? For camera, camera. No, no, no. It's ingenious. It's a psychological thing. Think about it, true. I'm listening. If a guy is willing to subject himself to the humiliation yeah. that is the WWWB campaign, He's under their brain control, it means yeah, <laughs> we don't have to give him a raise next year. <laughs> uh, Marlon Brando, Al Pacino uh, would not spit out Seinfeld and no dubba dubba dubbas. I don't care how much you paid him; they have uh, simple dignity. Yep, yep. Uh, so the the plan is, is mind control. If yeah. a guy does the WWWB thing. Then we know we got him. We know he's desperate for a gig. We know he's a drone and a team player. And we'll suck him dry. <sighs> anyway, uh, we're going to be on this show vibe. It's on um, uh, UPN? Yeah. Okay. And it's the new Quincy Jones thing. It's uh, like black, uh, late night, uh, alternative, uh, I don't know, kind of uh, trying to gather up that uh, Arsenio Hall audience that uh, has scattered around. And we're going to try to bring them back in. So Drew and I are guests. Now, we got a uh, pre-interview today. This is what they do on uh, regular shows. Someone calls you in, some producer, some staff member, and they talk to you on the phone for uh, usually 10 minutes, get a few beats. Uh, uh, how'd you meet Drew? Uh, any funny stories? Uh, what's the weirdest phone call? Okay, uh, we'll see you Thursday at uh, 3 sharp. Uh, right. You'll get scale, by the way, and uh, bring your own coffee mug. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> I did about an hour and 15 minutes tonight uh, worth of worth of interview, yeah. worth of pre-interview. And, uh, Drew, I know you did 45 minutes before, you, the before you had to hang up. I had to stop the guy put my kids to sleep. Now, the guy was a delightful guy, nothing wrong. Huh. Uh, I told him uh, I, I told him everything. Uh, I told him uh, about the time the priest molested me, and I <laughs> cried in my pup tent all night. I mean, I really got into some issues. I think I actually had a breakthrough halfway, halfway into it. But I, I started thinking to myself, uh, where is the pre-interview going on when I got a guest? And I'm not just talking about producer Ann. Uh, because she throws a bio at me usually a day before and calls it good enough. The TV show, oh, for Christ's sake, if I said to someone, uh, hey, uh, can I get a bio on this guy? Oh, great. <laughs> King Adam wants a bio. Well, your lordship, uh, we'll see if we can summon one for you. Anything else while we're away from the castle? And then I'd say, uh, I mean, here was the extent of my pre-interview with any guest we ever had on the uh, TV show or radio show. Um, what time is Malcolm and Eddie on? I don't know. Uh, 10? Uh, is it 10 or 10.30? Uh, I, I don't know. Read the cue card. It's 9.30, but don't worry about it. It'll but, be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. I, I think it's 9.30. I think it's Fox or something like that. Is it still on? Uh, I don't know. Just get out there. Ready? Go. Where's all my, where's all my, uh, my, my legions? Where, where are my minions? Where are my people, because, You know what it is? They have such faith in your ability to oh. dredge out reality from okay. these uh, prima donna Thank celebrities you. That, Thank you. that they don't feel you need any pre-interview. Besides, it would take the edge okay. off your, your reality-based interviewing style. Okay. All right, you okay? All right, let's go. Yeah, we some calls, please? Uh, let me just say right. one more thing. Yeah. I'm nervous now. I don't trust any show that would yes. put Drew and I on as guests. Especially if you have to interview us for two hours. First off, I know they're desperate. I mean, they are hard up. They are hard up in a big way. And they weren't just, they were like honest like wolves, too. I mean, they had like 18 calls about this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, very, uh, they're very desperate folks. Yeah. I give the show a week <laughs> with guests like us. Please, we're, uh, we're, uh, is more Amsterdam still alive? Uh, no? Uh, where's Drew and Adam? We'll get those two on. Uh, Drew, and, and last time we did this, it was on the Lisa show, oh. and we swore no more. Yeah. But they make you feel like big stars going in. And then it's, uh, boys, uh, <clears throat> the dunk tank's over here. <laughs> now we got an uh, ex-major uh, league uh, pitcher, uh, Nolan Ryan. He's going to be throwing uh, pomegranates at it. You two will be uh, in a thong back. I smell something going on, Drew. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. You right. know, uh, right. sure as hell, we are not going to just sit down and be interviewed. Okay. We're going to be doing something. All right. Be prepared to, uh, I get the front of the horse's outfit. Right. And that's, uh, that's my last statement. All right. And remind me to talk about this Brad Pitt thing uh, at some point tonight as well. Yeah, I'll write it down. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, please, write it down, Drew. Yeah. Tim. Oh, boy. Tim, you're 18. You're on Love Line. Oh, yeah. I got a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, I have these, like, zit-type things all over my penis. And I'd say about 90% of them are on my actual scrotum sac. Right. And I have no idea. <laughs> so it's on the scrotum sac, not the scrotum itself. I see. Uh, do they ooze or do they drain at all? Um, no. If I squeeze them, I can actually get, like, little pus. Is it pus or more like a toothpaste? Consistency. Oh, uh, toothpaste. Yeah, those are, those are sebaceous cysts, and they are normal. And they some guys are bothered because they don't look the greatest. Uh, yeah. But it's not anything you have to worry about. No, you're, you ain't dressing up the sack anyway. I mean, uh, that's pretty much a write-off on the aesthetic chart, yeah. wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. So don't worry about your sack getting any uglier. It's like a it's like a, a could a turkey get any uglier? Uh, no, not really. Don't worry. If, if, if one gets inflamed, red, hot, or, or actually has pus come from it, then you got to see a doctor. They can get infected, but it's not anything to worry about. Uh, I know you're not a fan of the lance, Drew, but I have done, no, uh, it, I've it, done yeah, a lot of operating on people myself. People get a lot of these things. They're big to oftentimes. I've really, I'm, I'm really getting to the point where I'm going to perform a major surgery on myself one day. You can just open that peritoneum right up and... Just, uh, just go right to town. Yes, local anesthetic. Sure, why not? I, I've done many things with a needle on my body, Drew, and so far I'm batting a thousand. Jason. Yeah. You're seventeen. Uh how you guys doing? Good. Good. What's up? Um about uh almost two months ago, I guess uh, like a week from two months, um me and my dad were at a, a restaurant and uh this girl uh 
comes up to me and says, uh, I guess she was in my, probably in her mid-20s, and uh, she says uh, she's got an 18-year-old sister who's looking for a boyfriend. So uh, she starts talking to me and everything, tells me her name and everything, and uh, uh, she calls her, like, right in a restaurant and uh, gets me to talk to her. So I start talking to her and everything. That, uh, Jason, uh, what's your question for us? Well, uh, what is this, love connection? What's your question? <laughs> well, um, anyway, it's like... At first, when we first started talking, everything was cool and everything. But uh, lately, she's been going out a lot with her sister and everything. And uh, All right, trying to rummage up more men. Uh, but uh, she like she tells me she'd like to like uh, go out to bars and everything with her sister. And it's like uh, lately, she's been from what she's telling me, she's been like getting really into the habit of drinking. Mm -hmm. What is your like, question for us? I was wondering, if, like, uh, would it be a, like a good idea to like uh, maybe try and work at this thing, or just like uh just go ahead and, like, leave her, like... No, well, there, there's what? nothing here, is there? Mm -hmm. What is this thing? They talked on the phone once, and now she's got a drinking problem. Yeah, there's nothing here. Are you there? dating her, Jason? Um, not exactly. She, she, she keeps telling me that, uh, that, um, like, her ex-boyfriend used to, like, beat her on her everything. Uh, All right, you're not dating her, Jason. No. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You're not dating her. That's fine. Just think about that. Probably best. Yeah, it's probably best, and it's probably not a great idea, but th we're not working this thing out because there is no this. <laughs> there is no this thing. This is, it it uh, does not exist. It's like, it's like mar marching into the boss's office and demanding a raise, and he goes, uh, hey, you don't work here. Exactly. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Exactly. Well, uh, uh, I saw the help wanted uh, 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 thing, and I'd passed by the building a few times, so naturally I thought I was an employee. Uh, who are you? Uh, security? I would, love, uh, I would love to see the ratio between uh, uh, men and women, hours spent uh, when you think you're in a relationship. Mm. I think men would crush Do women you? in Do that you? department. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're probably right. Uh, women would crush men in hours spent uh, thinking someone cares in a relationship. <laughs> but uh, guys think they're in a relationship sometimes uh, because they make a phone call. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you scratch beneath the surface a little, you realize that the way they paint it is like... Uh, well, we, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, she called me, and uh, we started going out, blah, 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 and you realize uh, they haven't gone on a date. Right. Haven't done any. I thought these two were six months into something yeah. here. Yeah. It's the beginning of the clinging. All right, and here's the this lesson. Where the clinging here's starts. the lesson, ladies. Uh, if men can turn this into a relationship, they can certainly turn a uh, hand job into an orgy. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're prone to hyperbole. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. Okay. Gary. Yes. Fifteen. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's funny when Drew uh, agrees with me uh, too quickly sometimes. And, and, has, and has to rethink it yeah. and then realizes, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of like um, when Oliver Nor North was on the stand, he'd uh, blurt out an answer once in a while. Then his attorney would whisper in his ear and once in a while he'd stick with it. Mm, okay. All right, Gary. That's enough of that. I don't need the smugness on the air. No. I don't need you to roll over and, uh, you know, break, break wind. There's nothing wrong with the Oliver North comment. People don't know how to respond in this society. That's the problem. You know you're, what I mean? Like, hey, Adam, are you getting a little preachy? You're getting, I, I'm you're, getting you're, a little you're, preachy. You're, you're, you're the man now. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> uh, I like this new coddling uh, ploy of yours, Drew. No, I'm not, I don't mean that you're the man. I mean you're becoming the man. Yeah, you're becoming the the uh, the uh, guy with which everyone uh, has dis for whom everyone has disdain. The authority, you know, it's bad. Oh, I see. You see you're making fun of. Like, oh, well, sure, whatever you say. No, people Adam. people don't know how to uh, just uh, keep their uh, trap shut these days. You know I mean, like once in a while, like someone will make a joke and you don't get it. You, know, you don't know who Oliver North is, or you don't care, whatever it is. So you nod your head and go, "Yeah, all right." Anyway, here is my question. You don't go, "Uh, yeah, uh, whatever." You're going to get fired from every job you have. All right, let me talk to Gary, see if he's straightened out. Was that Gary? Mm -hmm. uh, Gary? Yes. How's your attitude? I'm uh, perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. How y'all doing tonight? Good. Uh, so, um, I have a question for both of you, really. My best friend, she is in a relationship with a guy, and every time we, I want to do something with her, she has to ask him. Anything we ever do, she has to ask him. He's a very controlling person in what I think, and I need to. I need, I wanted to know how I could get her out of that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, she's she's on a leash basically. Yeah. Before. Does she like it on the leash? I don't know. I can't tell. That's why is this? Why is this your business? If she likes it on the leash, especially. 
Well, I don't, I don't think she does. You know, because have you asked her? Yeah, well, they broke up for a while because he was a total ass. He was a total jerk. Do you like her? No, no, it's no. nothing like that. Do you like gals? Do I like what? Ladies? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. But I mean, it's, it's he. We they broke up for a while because right. he didn't he didn't care for me, but I mean, he knows me very well. Right. He just. He thought that we were getting together, and she was cheating on him with me. And well, he knows that, but Gary, he still wants to believe it. Let me intervene here for a second and give okay. you a very valuable piece of information that that you'll learn later on in life. But you might as well learn it early. Getting involved in uh, other people's relationships, uh, friends, family members, uh, right. uh, people you work with—bad idea. Always trouble. Yeah always comes around to bite you in the ass because uh, one or the other in the relationship is going to hate your guts. Or uh, they'll break up and later on they'll resent you or whatever whatever it is. Uh, you need to be straight with people. You need to tell them how you feel. You can say, yeah, I don't really approve of this guy. Uh, are you sure you really want to be in this? But to get in and ask us a question like, how can I get uh, X o away from Y? Forget it. It ain't it ain't a good idea. X and Y are together for reasons way beyond you. Right. And this is your issue you're acting out to try to split them up. But their their problems are being acted out together, and that's why it doesn't look healthy to you. But they need each other in the condition they're in. Right. And this is something you learn later in life, and then uh, you really know it. It becomes a code when you get older. Yeah. I don't get involved with... And, and Drew, you should uh, fake your death. But other than Drew's relationship, uh, I don't get involved with any relationships anymore. You just decide which couples you like, which ones you don't like, and uh, steer clear of them. And if you see the person independent of their partner, then you see them. Don't bring the partner up, and uh, don't go out as a threesome. All right, I'm full of good advice tonight. Speaking of which, your plane ticket is, uh, like, the price is going up uh, hourly. <laughs> Are you serious, Drew? Yeah, I am serious. All right, I got to call you. When did your wife call me last? Uh, a week ago. Drew's wife will call three times uh, in, like, a 15-minute period. Uh, then she gives up. Okay, good. I've broken her. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll call her back. I, I got to check some stuff out. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, tell her I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Though. Adam. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. You're 15. You're on Loveline. Hi, guys. A long-time caller, first-time listener. Long-time caller, um, first-time listener. Hmm. All right, I'm going out. A little comedy this. pun there, Drew. Give the guy a break. He's 15. What do you want, Mort Saul? Go ahead. I just thought of the stupidest thing I could say. No, it, I, it, it was clever to some degree. We appreciate it. Well, not, not much of a degree, though. All right, let's not get um, mired in your uh, wit or lack thereof, Adam. What's going on? Um, I'm going out with this girl, and it's been for a few months. And uh, she's kind of fallen in, during the summer into a crowd that isn't, you know, they use drugs and that kind of stuff. And I'm not really comfortable with that. This is your girlfriend? Yeah. You're dating her? Right. You live nearby? Uh, n not not too close. Difference. How, how often do you guys see each other? Uh, four times a week. You know, pretty often. And so during the week at school and all, she's hanging out with people that wouldn't, you wouldn't really choose for your own friends. Yeah, well, it's it's more that now in the summer, and you know, you have your freedom to go wherever you want, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm kind of losing respect as it goes on, and I'm not sure if you told her that. Uh, no, she's fifteen. No, no. Have you told her that your your cha your feelings are changing as a result of her choices? No. Yeah, and she said that she's not going to be affected by that. By what? By by any of uh, their actions, but. And their actions are what? They're taking drugs. Well, I want to know specifically. What are they just? What are we talking about? They're the ones that you, uh, you know, your parents don't want you being friends with. It's really just that kind of group. Whether they're actually, you know, I think you know, some are on probation. What's, what's her deal? That you think she'd be attracted to that kind of thing? Um, she's fifteen. Uh, Come on. Yeah. Well, most fifteen-year-olds are attracted to a little action. Really? Adam's a little. Um, Straight. A little uptight. straight, a little uptight. Reminds me of a young Drew. Me too. Uh, ironic that his name is Adam. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he, you know, he's, he's staying on the straight and narrow. He's, uh, you know, he's got press collars. He's uh, doing his homework. He's uh, staying in school. I, I'm, I'm going into a song here, but I, I don't know which one. But the point is, is she's out, uh, wants to have a, uh, she's a little race here. Mm. Wants to experiment. Wants to, uh, not necessarily dangerous. Or, or maybe, or maybe is she, this is the beginning of an expression of something more serious. 
But we're getting a lot of questions tonight that we can't really answer. Yeah. Uh, the only answer for half the questions we're getting tonight is go talk to the person and tell them exactly what you just told us. And then when you get the response, uh, call us back and we'll tell you uh, where to kill yourself or not. So go talk to her. It's, uh, it's all right, everyone. You can go to the person, especially the person you're dating, and say to them, uh, hey, uh, I've seen this, I've seen that. Uh, I don't perceive it as an attack. I just want to talk about it and tell me where you're coming from. And then if you don't like where they're coming from and they don't want to do what you want them to do, then think about either changing yourself or moving on. Am I right, Drew? Yes, sir. All right, uh, sell the hell out of the next call, Drew, please. Uh, this is Don, 19-year-old firefighter. I think that's kind of interesting, and he's having horrible nightmares about his work. Hmm. Interesting. Here, Mike. You hear that thing skipping, Drew? I poured water on <laughs> Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carroll. That is Dr. Drew, his board certified physician. Is this a call we're going to take, Drew? Sure. All right. Giuseppe. Hi. Hi. How you guys doing? You're 19. Good. Um, well, first I'd like to say uh, I'm... Too happy. Uh, Giuseppe's problem is uh, sister happy. is constantly being sexually assaulted, blames Giuseppe. Th that is not somebody that comes gleefully to the telephone. Well, maybe he's nervous. Let's see. Giuseppe? It's not quite like that. What's uh, going on? Well, she lives in Philadelphia, and she's 23. Her birthday is in two days, so I've been thinking about her. And she um, admitted to me last year, about a year and a half ago, that she was bisexual. And it kind of shocked me at first. Uh, I'm heterosexual. so, um, But I took it in, and I accepted it pretty much within, like, the first month. Uh, my parents are very liberal and supportive. Um, but then, uh, not but a half year later, she admitted to me that, or she confessed in front of her boyfriend with me that uh, she'd been sexually assaulted pretty much every year of her life since she could remember. Sexually abused? Sexually abused. By whom? By um, past babysitters when she was younger. Um, there was a guy that used to take her out and was her best friend. Um, he was older. He would, like, watch after her. And, of course, some of the symptoms were, were pretty obvious later on, buying her candy, taking her to the movies, buying her presents. And uh, hold on a second, Drew. Mm -hmm. And do you buy your kids candy? <laughs> and uh, what about this Disney film you are seeing yeah, at last week? Bad sign. And what you get them last year for Christmas? Aha! Uh -huh. Plenty. All right. Uh, so the babysitter's taken an unnatural liking to her. When, right, when she was young. Right, so she's right. sexually confused. She's been abused. There's a lot of chaos in her relationships. And but she's probably, this is her probably her first solid relationship with a man that um, cares about her. He's 26, but mm -hmm. she's been, I know she's been raped a couple of times oh, by ex-boyfriends. Amazing. The and victims smell a good, the victimizers smell a good victim. Uh, I, you know, I don't think it's all that. I think guys oftentimes are just looking to get what they can get, and, uh, and people that haven't been victimized never, or I shouldn't say never, but rarely get themselves into the compromising positions. You mean they, they start fighting so fast? Well, what I'm saying is, is I'm put Giuseppe on hold for a second. Uh, Drew has this theory, and it's more than a theory. It's a fact that people that have been victimized throughout their lives tend to be good victims when they're adults. Mm -hmm. if, if, a, if a young lady was uh, molested by her babysitter um, repeatedly, uh, age uh, you know, 9 through uh, 13, she, rest assured someone's going to get her, uh, the, hand, the grubby hands on her at age 17 and 18 as well. And Drew says... And Drew can't figure it out. How come these victimizers can smell out these victims? Like across How do the they room. know? How do they know when someone is broken a little bit, just enough that there's enough cracks in the armor that I can sneak through and get to these people? Yeah. But here's what I think is uh, in it, it's part of it. Sounds like there. I'm right? kind of scared me. For a second. <laughs> part of it is that, but the the other part is this, Drew. I think a lot of guys are, are, are going to try a lot of stuff with a lot of people over their lifetime. And they'll say stuff, and I'm not talking about, you know, uh, out and out rape, but I'm saying they'll say to some chick at work, hey, how about we go uh, tie one on tonight over at the local bar? And the people that have been victimized, oftentimes their self-esteem and everything is in such a condition that they go out 
and have the drink. Right. One thing leads to another, and he date rapes them in the car they, of but the they car. Also, the abusers also have to be in such a mindset that they have no acknowledgement of the other person's feelings. Yes. Except insofar, all they tune into is, can I get what I need from this person? Right. Not, not how will it affect them, how do they feel about it. They don't exist. Right. As far as an abuser is concerned. And, uh, and I, I still don't get it. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I still well, don't get Listen, it. it's not all one or the other. Can I, can I say something? Yes. She, I think she's kind of an exception. Um, I can see a few signs, but she, she's very confident. She carries herself, carries herself high. She's very intellectual and sophisticated in a lot of ways. Sure. So and far you haven't said anything that's exceptional. I'm sorry? There's nothing that makes that exceptional. I mean... Well, all right, oh, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We've been getting calls all F and night about uh, what to do about somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to be rude. I know she's your sister. I wish your sister would call in and talk mm -hmm. to us. Now, what is your question? And we'll, we'll get in and out of here. Okay, my question is, I, I'm not that sexually experienced. And I, I cannot begin to say that I understand what she's been through. But I think that it's important for me as her brother to show her um, unconditional love. Right. To show her you know, that I care about her and that I, I'm going to represent a good role model for the male. Okay, Giuseppe, that is a, uh, we appreciate it, but that is a, that is a comment, not a question. Okay. What is the question? The question, I mean, it's perplexing. You know, I don't know, I mean, I'm going to visit her in August and I want to be able to bring this up and be, you know. Okay, you want to know how to broach the subject? Uh, wait, how wait, to wait. approach it? No. How, to, how I can help her? How I can you, contribute? You, you can contribute by being available, being sensitive to her feelings, not worrying about your own feelings, not worrying about your need to fix her. All right, don't come down on Giuseppe. I'm He's not, a good kid. I'm not. But I'm just saying, just be available. And he, he grinds a hell of an organ. <laughs> be, be available. Don't don't be judgmental. Give her opportunities to talk about it if she wants to talk about it. But don't go in with the idea you're going to fix anything. Because you're not her therapist. You're not uh, okay, Mr. Fix-It. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> See, Drew, you should have stopped the therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not uh, her therapist. You're not a uh, uh, guy who fi uh, fixes stuff. John. John, you're okay. 17. What is the question that you would like to ask us tonight that pertains to you? Okay, this is a problem I have. I mean, I like this person, right? And, um... Every time we, like, talk on the phone and stuff like that, he always brings up the sex question. And I want to do it with him, but I don't know how to tell him yes or no. You're 17. Yeah. How old is he? He's 25. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The answer is no. What? No? I mean, but in a couple months, I'll be turning 18, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it really won't matter. What, uh, how'd you meet up with this gent? From, um, mutual friends. Mm hmm Have you had, uh... Homosexual relationships before? Kinda. Uh huh. The Bahaiman still intact? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that something uh, you're going to get into with this guy? Maybe. Mm hmm. John? Huh? When did you realize you were gay? When I started talking to him. Oh, you're not. What? Huh? I mean, uh, I mean, I had feelings for other guys, but you know, I never actually went out and said it. So this is your first first love, so to speak. Um, right. I, I can't say person's name on the radio. No, but this this is uh, the first guy you're going to be with, uh, potentially. Yeah. Uh huh. You, Have you, you been with women? Yeah. Mm. If this doesn't turn into a relationship, are you going to be hurt? No. What uh, What's going on with you, John? Where are your folks? In bed, sleep like they're supposed to be. Uh huh. Uh, everything fine at home? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Smelt a little trouble there, but uh, we'll take your word for it. Yeah, you know, if you turn eighteen and you want to have a relationship with this guy, is he a good guy? Yeah. All right, but just recognize he's a lot older and he may not be into the quality of relationship that you clearly are into with this guy. And uh, it's just like a fourteen-year-old; uh, you're new at this, and uh, your expectations can be a lot different than the reality you can get yourself hurt. All right, but Drew, what do you think of this? Is there a gender thing going on that you're compensating for somehow? I mean, you got an 18-year-old guy, or a guy who's going to be 18. You have a 25-year-old guy. What if it was an 18-year-old girl and a 25-year-old guy? Any difference in your eyes? He said, I think he said 23-year-old guy. Uh, I thought he said... You may be right. John? John? 
Hello? Uh, 23 or 25? I said 25. 25. Okay. That's, that's a little, I thought you heard 23. It's a little bit old. Old for him. I'm asking you, is there a difference between no. a gay and a heterosexual no. relationship? No. No. There isn't, is there? No. You'd think maybe you'd think there might be. No. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Yeah. But there isn't. Not really. I'm thinking about an 18-year-old woman and a 25-year-old guy in the same question being posed between an 18-year-old guy and a 25-year-old guy. And I'm thinking, uh, yeah, it's the same. There's a problem. A 25-year-old uh, dating of 18-year-old, 7-year-old is, is something not right. What about lesbians? Same. Okay. Just checking, Drew. Don't get up tight. Alex. Yes, sir. You're 20. You're on Loveline. Yeah, I am going to come right out with the question since you guys have been on a little tirade tonight about uh, useless talking. I am now on such a roll that I think I'm going to see if I can go on the entire uh, show without telling a joke. <laughs> that sounds terrific. All here right. Here it goes. How do I stop attracting psychos in my life here? Attracting my, psychos or choosing psychos? Uh, that's a good question. You tell me. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to put my money on Drew and go with the choosing the psychos part. You think so? Mm -hmm. uh, I know so. How many How many psychos you been with? Uh, pretty much all of them. <laughs> how many is that? Three or four. What does psycho mean? What does that mean? Well, going back to the beginning, they've all either been like molested or raped or just have some kind of guilt about having been promiscuous when they were younger. It's great how uh, you make that uh, that transition in society from victim to psycho. Well, usually, okay. no, no, I'm not harping on you, Alex. It's true. Uh, usually women, uh, and men, I believe, do it somewhere between the, ooh, about the, somewhere between 12 and 14. That's when you make that trans, that transition. I mean, think about it. Hey, when you're 9, 10, 11 years old, you are a poor, defenseless victim. Uh, then somewhere around 13, 14, you start acting out and you turn into a psycho. <laughs> uh, same with guys. Guys uh, get, you know, physically abused at their dad's hands uh, for, you know, age uh, 3 through age uh, 11. And then somewhere around 13, uh, let's lock them up and throw away the key. Uh, well, allow me to clarify that. Hmm. Um, somehow when I start seeing these girls, their problems that personally I think they generated, a couple of them at least, suddenly shifts onto me and becomes my problem in their eyes. Of course. How's that? And, and ruins everything. Just, you know, they'll start being like, oh, I don't know if I can trust you. And, Right. All this has happened to me. Well, you're Papa now. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so what happened to you that this is attractive to you? Uh, nothing that I can tell. I mm -hmm. had the perfect childhood. Well, the, no. I, I somehow I knew this was right, perfect. Uh, welcome to Psychoville. Enjoy. Enjoy a life of dating psychos. Great. Um, one, hmm, I'm going to propose a theory. All right. Uh, it's going to kind of evolve as I'm talking about it. That... Um, your inability to have more realistic relationships with other persons, other objects, harkens from your persistent need to idealize your family of origin and thereby idealize yourself. So you pick people who need to be idealized and idealize you because that's the way they defend themselves against the trauma they've been through. And part of that, is for your, on your behalf, of, of remaining Hercules, if you want to use the, the model of the, the movie, is going in and trying to fix them and save them. And, of course, in reality, it never works. you're just acting out. It never works. Okay, Drew. I'm 33, uh, totally sober. You didn't get it. And uh, have seen a lot of the Discover Channel and uh, have uh, not much of an idea of what you just said, except for I, you did mention... Um, see the movie Hercules. Hercules. It, 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 did I talk about this the other night? No, but see, that's the beauty of you, Drew. You don't need to talk about something on the air to reference it on right, the air. Right. The movie Hercules talks is, is a wonderful... Um, example of people with certain kinds of narcissistic disorders and a very common type in our society it takes many different sort of forms but uh, the idea of him being born a god and going down to earth then trying to become a god again then when he is he finds it very ungratifying he wants to go back to earth for his real parents to be a human and have a real relationship uh, this is the disney hercules right, not the, uh, the steve the reeves uh, gay porn version of hercules the disney one and I, I i would suggest that that may be the, the kind of dynamic going on with alex perhaps and he's still acting out trying to be superhuman and go in and fix everybody all right so here's the deal Alex, yes. uh, you're 20. You have uh, probably four or five more of these uh, to get under your belt before you get the right one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's scary but true. Oh, yeah, please. But, but he's, he's still maintaining this the idealized vision of his family. All oh, right. Perfect child. All right. Perfect. All right. Let the guy have his family, would you, Drew? Uh, what Alex needs to do is uh, look within. He's starting that. Uh, break the family down. Uh, be realistic about that. 
And then you're going to have a few more of these relationships. You can't uh, discover something and cut it off. I mean, that's not the way it works. Am I right, Drew? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, people think they're going to have some sort of a psychological uh, metamorphosis because they've caught on to it. Oh, it's right. like discovering your fat. Right, right. Well, hey, you look in the mirror. Oh, holy Christ, I got a scale. It's 310 pounds. Right. Wow. Now that I know, yeah. uh, tomorrow morning, uh, I'm, I'm going around with a, a spandex thong back. Right. Uh, no. Uh, now you go on a diet. Right. Uh, now you jog around the park. Right. Uh, now you eat um, uh, that uh, goddamn uh, puffed rice. And maybe, just maybe, a year and a half from now, uh, you'll look bad. You'll look awful now. It's, it's the same great, thing it's with a, the it's psychological a, it's stuff. A great uh, paradigm. Really? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Engineer Mike, the one that wonder. He's a whiz. You know why they call him a whiz? I think he uh, peed on my earphones and they work again. What'd you do to him? Smack him around. A little bit. Just smacked him around. It's absolutely amazing in this uh, day and age uh, we live in uh, that there's still nothing in a uh, mechanic or electrician's toolbox that equals a good smacking around. <laughs> True? Yeah. What's going on with you? Just uh, making hand signs to Ann. All right. You're doing a fine job. Uh, phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm a man. All of that is Dr. Drew. You know, the problem with uh, electronics these days, Drew, is you can't whack them like you could uh, a little couple weeks ago. Well, you whack your mic, but I'm talking about, uh, I think we were talking about this once. When I grew up, I had a Zenith TV that was metal. Mm. And when it didn't work, you'd go up and just make a fist and just... I, I, Hammer it. I, yeah. I, I have corporal... Uh, tunnel syndrome from all the appliances I've whacked. Well, excuse me, was the appliances <laughs> you whacked? Or? All right, all right, that could be something else. But uh, it certainly didn't help the fact that I spent uh, the better part of my childhood pounding my TV set. Yeah. You'd sit down, the thing would go bad. As soon as your ass made contact with the sofa, the thing would go snow again. You'd have to get up, and it had a metal case around it, and you just make that yeah. fist and Bam! And, but it had a real, like an empty sound to it, like a little bit. Like yeah, a, it was yeah. hollow in there. Oh, and it, and, you'd uh, just whack it like a big tin bread box, and it, it would straighten out. Was it the one that would go down like, to a little dot at the end? Yeah, and yeah. It'd pap, and it, is, it, it was like you're actually disciplining the set. Like the set went, oh, well, hey, 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 it's cool, it's cool. Did it have a little wheel on the side? Yeah, it had a wheel. Yeah, I had, I had the same CV. It had a little hamster running in it. No, 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 the wheel. Was oh, the, the wheel, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to actually. You got to what like. What year was this? This is this about is 1940. Six, well, we just won the war. You guys sound really 64 old right now. or something like that. I'd say. Well, you got to re oh, hold on. You got to understand my family. Uh, my family had the radio uh, Marconi uh, used in the lab, uh, even though it was 1978. Uh, my, you know, my dad's uh, still got the A track and the Beta going. Uh, believe me, there were folks on the block that had the, uh, you know, big screen color uh, Sony TV, not us. We had the, the one, uh, Uncle Lou died and he left you this, 1948. Uh, okay, Dad, should I punch it again? Well, why don't we turn it on? I think we had the same TV. Yeah, we actually used to practice punching the set even when it wasn't on. You know, just to stay in shape. Uh, yeah, yeah, All yeah. right. <laughs> I'm just amazed we had the same oh, set. Oh, for Christ's sake. Yeah, you had to tune the knob. Oh, boy, you kids today with your digital hi-fi. All right, um, here's a little piece of uh, email I got from the uh, Smack Runner. <laughs> Dear Loveline crew, uh, you guys are fun to... Uh, 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 ah, yes, uh, here's the part I want to get to. Uh, he wants to hear the Adam Shuffle. As you know, a uh, dedicated listener sent in uh, what he'd made uh, called the Adam Shuffle on a CD. What was his name, Engineer Mike? Do you remember? Is it on the CD there? Chris Nelson. Chris Nelson. Uh, genius Chris Nelson sent this in, and it came out pretty good. Pretty good production value, given uh, even Engineer Mike a run for his money. I love how you bring in one email, and it's about, hey, let's hear more about me. <laughs> <laughs> Bring some more email. Uh, listen, oh, this I found is my favorite one out of a hundred yeah, emails. That's one more. that said, "Let's hear more, Adam." All right, and this is my attempt to inject some humor and entertainment into tonight's show because so far it's just been Drew with a puss on and me going on these uh, tirades about the decay of society. 
So I wanted to put a little production uh, comedy into it, all right? Huh? Let me indulge myself, please. Engineer Mike's got uh, such a puss on over this guy, Chris, who made this. He's clearly jealous. It's a pretty decent-sounding uh, Adam Shuffle, and Mike's kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's decent. Very, very envious. It's not becoming at all, Engineer Mike. All right, do you have it queued up, Mike? You haven't sabotaged it in any way? No. All right, let's listen to the Adam Shuffle. I have a beef with the Engineer Mike. He is the uh, the fire starter. These are actually all insulting to me. Uh, oh. Adam sucks. Adam is a loser. I took baths with my sister like into my late 20s. I Stupid took dude. baths with Dr. Drew like into my late 20s. My boyfriend and I have sex at least twice a week, and he doesn't wear a condom. I was 15 and having sex with a 24-year-old man via the computer. I uh, put my hand down Dr. Drew's pants. Then the orgasms come fast and frequent. Where does my penis end and where does his begin? And whose nuts are these anyway? I <laughs> love schlong. Do you faggot? That's uh, something my mom would say. Sex with mom is weird. I was in the deep end of a swimming pool, and I was uh, cornered by two um, haunchy uh, elderly women who uh, beat me with my own genitalia. By the way, he'd always describe his mother and grandmother as haunchy. Engineer Mike, uh, shut off Drew's microphone. I molested a youngster on a couple of occasions. Here's what my shrink told me. Faggot better run. I put the snake in the dog's ass. <laughs> Here's what my shrink told me. My mom beat the gay out of me. I don't wax my butt. And I do not shave my butt. I have pruned my butt on occasion. Could I drink the contents of Dr. Drew's penis? I'm Adam Carolla. I wanted to explore my ass over the air. How big is your butt? Drew looks cool, but Adam looks like a dork. Adam, please. Adam, please. Engineer Mike, uh, shut off my microphone. Well, see, that was pretty good. It's clever. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was well, well done, and the production I, I'd like value Adam, was there. Adam, please. <laughs> I mean, and I didn't know we'd sung that mantra so frequently. Yeah, what I don't know do? who said that. Uh, uh, was that Ann? Yeah, it was me and Ann. No, oh, right. uh, Robin. Oh, you guys are awesome. You're 38, baby. Oh, you bet. Uh, you're a baby, aren't you? No. Okay, you're a woman, though, right? You bet. Okay. What's going on? my heart big time broken. What happened? Well, God, I've been involved for over a year. Uh, I'm in an alternative relationship, or I should say I was. Well, uh, this is a new euphemism I'm not familiar with. A uh, euphemism. Alternative? Yeah. I'm a lesbian? Okay. Okay. All right, we understand that term. Okay, there we go. Alternative, trying to be politically correct. No, we don't. <laughs> That's not something oh, we're not particularly into here, are we? There we no. Go. no, but you're making me nervous, though, Robin. Well, don't make me nervous. All right, what's going on? Okay. So, so she left you. Well, what happened is we were gonna, we had just had plans to, God, move in, get our stuff together. We work things through. Um, oh, boxing things, getting things ready. Um, Monday, I came home. We took a little space. Um, she called me Monday night, everything's wonderful, I love you. Tuesday, everything's wonderful, I love you. Wednesday, I thought it was my turn, I called her. Um, I don't love you, you deserve better than me. Bam, over. How long had you guys been together? Over a year. And how had your relationship been before this sudden... Wonderful, I've never been loved so much. Oh, there's something uh -oh. you know, dreadfully wrong here. Well, uh, we're looking at something and I... <laughs> she is manic depressive. Okay. And so been off her medication. All right. And so, had been so, off her lithium for two weeks prior all right, to All right. Okay. Th that's, that makes sense. I mean, there, she may be completely manic right now. Well, or completely she might depressed. be looking at things really clearly also. And have been depressed and have manic before? No. I have never seen the manic. I have seen uh, the depression. All right. Whatever she is, she is, uh, something is way off right now. I mean, to be that impulsive and that uh, bizarre. In terms but she's of always been very scared and... And you need like, to help her get back on her medication. Uh, like bipolar, untreated, can be, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but can it really be wild. I, I never saw the manic. Well, and, but you may be seeing it now. And I tried to get a hold of, because I had a, like a support list for her, mm -hmm. and I tried to contact two people. One, to get the number of one person, because I had lost my list, and that just caused real grief. And the people that I called around that just said, don't ever call here again. Mm. And I'm like, okay. Robin? Yeah? Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, where'd you guys meet? We, we met through an ad. Mm-hmm. And 
I have never, and I'm going to like stress this, never have been cared so much in my life. Uh -huh. Who didn't care for you? Who didn't? Yeah. I would say past lovers because I chose really wrong. Uh -huh. How come? How come? Yeah. Because my own problems. Which are what? What are, your, what are your problems? I would say that I had, um, I had a bad picker. Uh, Not picker here now. Picker. You had a bad picker. There you go. All right. <laughs> What's a picker? Oh, a who? Why? Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Robin. Yo. Hold on one second, because we got to go to a uh, break. Okay. But I, I'd like to get to the bottom of this, and uh, rest assured we will. Uh, Robin's got an energy. Oof. <laughs> Robin's got one of them en energies. Uh, Robin is the reason why uh, I don't like um, uh, going out. Out of the house? Yeah. Robin's got that thing going on. You know what I mean? Because people like Robin are out there. You don't like going out of the house? I like Rob. Uh, yes. Yes. They, Robin's they got you? that energy going. It scares you. She's got, you know what I mean? She's she's talking for, for the three of us, and she's got an answer, and she's got a rap, and she's kind of... Yeah. Uh, when we come back, we're going to break Robin down a little bit and get her to drop it. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, she's yeah, got yeah, a facade. Yeah. She's putting something on all the time. She's, yeah. well, she's used to, nervous. She, she's yeah, nervous. she's nervous, but she's a tap dancer. Yeah. She's always yeah. going and smiling yeah. and yeah. feet are moving. We're going to break her down. We'll get to the bottom of this all after this message. Hey, it's Loveline, kitties. I'm Adam Kroll. That's Dr. Drew. And we'll be back in 10 seconds. This is Loveline. Radio Station. KROQ FM, Pasadena, Los Angeles. The world famous K Rock. All right, we're back. Phone number 1 800 LF. <laughs> Did you put the toilet seat up? Uh, yeah, what's up? In your, I, was at the, I was at the urinal. Yeah. Well, I'm wearing a shirt. Uh, I mean, look at my shirt. It hangs down uh, to my knees, for uh, Christ's sake. I was trying to hold it out of the way with like my mouth or something, but apparently I didn't uh, uh, do a good enough job. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, is, there any, uh, is there any problem with that? Just quit lifting it up and put it on the table. Here, show it to me. Uh, should, I, should I go soak it in something? Eventually. <laughs> don't, don't wear the shirt tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh <Okay>. yes. <laughs> well, seriously? There's no harm in that. <laughs> is there really? No, I don't think there is. All right. Uh, you guys ever do that? Uh, Drew, you must. You wear those shirts all the time. You yes. wear those button-up shirts. And yeah. the, the, uh, I don't know who the designers are. Uh, here's a, here would be a brilliant idea. Your shirt normally comes untucked in the back. At least that's my experience. Because when you sit down and, like, drive in your car, for instance, it pulls, it pulls out. out the back and it bunches up around your ass. The front does not really come untucked that much. I mean, as far as the front of, like, a dress shirt... Or a T-shirt, you only need it to cross the waistband by maybe two or three inches for it to stay put, for the most part. You know, if you got the belt on and everything, and you're in relatively decent shape. Uh. Why don't we start taking shirts and sort of augering out the front a little bit? You know what I mean? Like, don't put so much material. Why do we have to have those long hanging front? It's like they're almost designing it for you to pee on it. It hangs right there. You ladies don't know what we're talking about, but the shirt will hang uh, the shirt just, tails. The shirt tail will yeah. hang right in front of the penis. Right. Then if your penis is shaped like mine, it uh, I'll oftentimes have, have a wet spot around the chest. It actually goes up. Okay, Drew. You know, why don't we auger out the front? This is another idea, Drew. Brilliant. This is a money maker. Yeah. Okay. Let's finish with Robin. All right. All right, Robin is Yeah, there uh, we go. She's thirty eight. Look at her talking before I even got to her. Hey, I'm just gonna keep up with you guys. Shh. All right, hold on now, Robin. You're 38. Yeah. You're, you're lesbian. Yeah. You're in a relationship. And you said you had, a, you had a bad picker. <sighs> you were. Oh, let me finish. She was That's in a. The only thing that I could think happened, but at the same time, before you continue, this is one woman in my life who has cared for me more than anyone I have right. ever been with. Robin, hold on a second. Drew, quiet down for a second. Let all me right. just make sure we're all on the same page for people who are just tuning in the show. Right. She all has right. a lesbian lover. She's manic depressive. Uh, things were going along swimmingly. They're about to move in, and at the last second, she called and said, uh, I'm not right for you. Do yourself a favor. Get away from me. We're not moving it. Now, what does a bad picker mean? What does the word picker mean? Well, I put my, my butt real quick in the therapy. And I'm thinking, as in a bad picker, that, oh, God, maybe I just, um, 
Robin, I hate to get back to this all the time, but what's up with you? I mean, oh, what, what? I'm, I'm, I guess I'm really in grief over this. I'm in shock still over this. Okay, is My it? God, we looked at camper trailers on Saturday, and yeah, but there's something. This is like you got to think more in terms of her biology being off, and that she's well, sort of out of her head. Also, that she's really in her right frame of mind, and she's like really taking care of her right now, and mm. she can't be in a relationship. And I'm looking at her past and her and herself being so scared, and, and what what is she the gets spooked easily? Why the impulsive behavior? That's not uh, good. Uh, Drew, you know, here's your problem, Drew. You're focusing on uh, her partner. I think we ought to talk about Robin. She, Robin, you asked her six times. She's not willing to answer you. What do you okay, mean? Well, well, let's do it again. All right, Robin. Yes. You just answer these questions I'll give you. All right. Don't elaborate. Just uh, yes, no, and a little in between. Okay. Um, how was your family growing up? My yes. family? Yes. It sucked. Okay. And uh, I had a very dominant mother. And a very passive father. Ah, true. Uh, that's Drew's theory. And uh, when did you realize you were a lesbian? Oh, about five years old. Okay, so you've been a lesbian your whole life. Yes, I have. Did you try heterosexual relationships? Yes, I did. And it didn't work? No. Uh-huh. And uh, were you say, would you say you were ever traumatized at any point in your life? Um, I would say so from experiences and... Like what? Oh... Family experiences. Usually is experiences uh -huh. that traumatize. Yeah, I would say more on the mother's side. What well, did she do to you? Well, I'm not even going to talk about that on the radio. Oh, yes, you is, baby. Oh, that's what you want. What did she do? Well, I, don't, I won't even go there. Robin. But Robin, that's where the that's where the the material is. I mean, that's, well, well, it might be well, where the material. Wait, is. Well, hold on, hold on. What'd you call in for? A request. <laughs> that, that's where the source of these issues come from. <laughs> you guys are great, Robin. Yes. Now listen to me carefully. Okay. You're a little bit nutty. Just a little bit. I can hear it in your voice. You understand? And you compensate for that by singing and dancing real fast all the time. Lots of quick answers, lots of energy, lots of stuff going on. But underneath that, there's a little bit of pain there. Yeah. And, there and there's some problems there. Now what you need to do, uh, if you pardon me for saying so, but it is my job, is uh, get... Get beyond the facade a little bit here. The okay. quick answers and the jovialness and, and the energy. And just take a breath and relax for just one moment. Okay. All right, you got a lot of pain here. Uh, an you, awful lot. Yeah, okay. And it's not so much the pain of the relationship you were just in, but it's the pain of the past. Absolutely. And it's driving you. Absolutely. And you need to sort of sort through that in order to uh, make a life for yourself. Yes. Okay, so what did your mom do to you? Um, my mom abused me. Physically? Uh, sexually. So, okay. Well, uh, you have every right to be insane. You really do. I mean, if your mom sexually abuses you, I, if your dad sexually abuses you, you have the right to uh, claim insanity. But if your mother does it, I mean, that is a serious, serious, serious violation. violation. Yeah. All right, Robin? No, I understand that. Uh, how long did this go on? Um, probably from the age of maybe, um, five to 17. Wow. And where's your mom now? In Miami, thank God. Is she bipolar? Excuse me? Is she bipolar? You know, I've, you know, I, I don't know about her. What is her story? I have an adopted sister who is uh, very uh. depressive. But what is mom's story? I mean, what, what was, what's her deal? I mean. My mother, I would say, was very, 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 um, oh, majorly codependent. Where More did, than that. Where did yeah, listen, I'm codependent. Oh, okay. Uh am I? Yeah. Oh, I am? Yeah. Oh no. I'm not. Uh, I am. Oh you are. Yeah. No, I'm trying to be honest with you guys. All right, but what what, what, what is, we're thinking the mom had a major <laughs> psychiatric yeah, like disorder. Like mom had a tumor or yeah. something. Yeah. Okay. What did your mom do to you? Well let's say there might have been some electricity involved and some, you know, some I mean, torture. But that's about all I'm gonna say okay, on the radio. So, so she so she it wasn't that she sexualized you that she abused you physically by mutilating your sexual organs sexual, yeah. external genitalia yeah. how did she do that Robin? Well, we're, I'm not don't, 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 parades. I've, I've heard of stuff like this you have? Yeah, 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 yeah. well I mean what do you do you plug something into the wall? <laughs> sometimes <laughs> Seriously, yeah. yeah oh, this you is, guys this are is bad. no, but well, this no, is, no, I'm, I'm not, not going to do it on the radio. No, this is what women, this is what his, this isn't. Yeah. Drew, I'm going to reach over there and punch you. Would you? Would, would... Reach out and punch me because you can't reach. No, not you. I'm going to smack Drew. It's my code of pants. I'm okay. trying to rescue her from your okay. BS. Um, it's not my BS. This is uh, 
uh, this is something that I've uncovered yeah. here. Drew, uh -huh. who, uh, hold on a second, Robin. <sighs> Listen, Drew, you were uh, willing to spend 10 minutes uh, talking about her uh, lesbian lover. I immediately tapped into the fact that something was up big time yeah. with Robin. Yeah, yeah. You, you tried like hell to ignore that. I would not let you ignore that. Now I've unearthed it, and I've uh, discovered uh, my little treasure, which is this horrible situation right. that went on with Robin. I'm trying to further my investigation, and you want to come in and louse things up uh, like you're uh, 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 LAPD in the OJ trial. Maybe it's my instincts that if you open things up too much, uh, what the hell are you going to do with it? Uh, except to be holding a bag there that uh, you can't really manage. All right, but Robin is someone... Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, don't, don't give me that crap. You know I'm right here. Robin. I like the toughness of you guys. Well, we love each other, so we're uh, able Good. to abuse each other freely. Good. <laughs> All right, so your mother did things to you, and not necessarily in a sexual way, but to to I would your say organs. It was a sexual way. I would say it is a, it's a it's a way that um, people get off on sexually. Let's look at the film Stubble mm -hmm. and try to think of a few things around that. Are you, do you have multiple disorder too? Well. They had questioned it, but I believe I am not. Yeah. I mean, is that kind of ritualistic abuse that leads to multiple No ritualistic. Or, yeah, but it, 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 there's a ritualistic quality to this. You know? It happened where it was repeatedly? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did she shock you in your uh, private parts when you were younger? Um, yes. Okay. And where was Dad? Who, has anybody reported this yet? Your mom should still be incarcerated for this. Oh, it was in the bathroom. Where was your dad, though? He watched. He, he watched? very passive. He watched while this went on. That's yeah. not passive. That's, he, did, he, that's, uh, he didn't know what to do. Sadistic. He was a very passive father. He didn't know what to do. Well, what if his pant leg was on fire? Would he would he pee on it or would he just sit there? Well, he probably would pee on it. All right. Uh, so if what you're saying is true, your mother uh, tortured you and your genitalia with some sort of uh, like curling iron or something. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's not funny. That's what. That's that, cute. I love the curling iron. Well, me. it was a. What was it? Well. Let's just say there was some abuse with water, and then there is uh, electricity involved. Mm hmm Okay. And your dad stood by? Yes. And do you, you say you have... So a... did my grandmother. Oh. My great-great-great-great-great-grandmother, great, 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 great she, like, really felt really, like, terrible around this. That's incredible. Oh, feel bad. Hold on one second, Rob. I'm calling in an airstrike, Drew. Uh, Are you with me? Yeah. I'd like to fly the plane. <laughs> Drew, you know I'll that. be the gunman. Uh, Drew, I've never, I've never felt this way about uh, other uh, humans. Uh, Robin. Yeah. Uh, did you say you had a an adopted sister? Or? Yes, I do. Oh, th who did, adopted these people? Who uh, my my mother adopted, and so did my father, because they weren't able to have children. And then they had me two years later, and I was a pain in the butt. I was um, breached, cesarean, artificially inseminated, and she bled in bed the whole nine months. And then I was born, and God bless, was a lesbian. Uh, well, I, I don't even, uh, that could have been part of your mom's doing. Uh, well, that's my humor, though. Okay, uh, what, um, all right, and how old were you when all this uh, torture started? I right. would say, um, from what I can remember, I would say between 5 and 16. And how, and, and, and that's how long it went on? Yeah, because then I left Miami and moved out here. <sighs> Incredible. And what about your, uh, step brother or sister adopted my adopted sister she's um Stripper. i know she's manic depressive but she's um very very into the herbs into the kava kava uh, and another theory of it. there you go and it, was she abused i have no idea um i remember her i'm going with yes yeah, uh, she may not have been as overtly abused but there had to been some kind of abuse in this kind of family yeah all right so and has anybody reported the, your mom's behavior um, There's no statute of limitations on this kind no, of thing. No, it was more... It was more um, no, this has never been... It was more, um, you know... This I has never... How much she'd do anything for her family, but smack you on the hand the next day. This has never been reported to... Oh, no. What do you think about reporting it? Well, I... Uh, it's... Hmm? I'm trying to heal myself. This could be a, a way to help you heal. What do you think about that? Yeah. Huh? I guess what I'm hurting on mostly tonight is that, you know, the fact that a lover like left me. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is like lamenting uh, the jack being stolen from the trunk of your car that just got hit by a train. 
I uh, mean, uh, there, you, you got bigger fish to fry here. Of course we do. But let, let's let's stay with that of relationship course, for once. I know once. Where my grief is lying. I have been in long-term relationships before. All right, one, one quick second. Let's just talk about the relationship. And I would say, assume that there's something wrong with her biology. Although your choice in relationships are going to be suspect. As you said, you have a bad picker by having been so badly abused that you're going to choose people who tend to be rather abusive. Well, with I, I have had um, and have chosen abusive relationships. Uh, I understand. And this was different. Hey, 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 Robin, Robin, no, Robin. No, Robin. you need to hear me. With someone uh, that I have I been understand this was different. With someone that has really cared about I understand me. that. I got that. Okay. But uh, I think you should look at this one as something having gone wrong. I, and, and I'm saying, although it's suspect... I'm still willing to say that this may be the one that's as you describe it, and that something may have happened biologically to her and get her assessed, get her back on her meds. Anything is possible on a bipolar. Uh, goes off their medication, uh, their uh, judgment uh, goes awry, their uh, perceptions uh, twist and change. Get her uh, back on her medication. Okay. See if perhaps she doesn't want to get back involved. Uh, wow. Uh, bye. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh. Now, do you guys understand? I can smell it. Uh, when it's coming off of people. I mean, yeah, Robin I hit the air with such energy that, but, oh, man. But I smelled it so much, I wanted to stay away from it. Oh, don't give me that. No, no, no. You, oh, were, no, no. you smelt meatloaf. I, I smelt the truth. I smelt the truth, but it, it seemed a little much to, to get into. This, these kinds of... You didn't smell anything until I came sniffing around. All right. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Right? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yes, of course. All right. We've sussed out another lesbian, by the way. I mean, where it came from? Yes, so yes. Uh, everyone hates me when I think uh, homosexuality is something uh, that oftentimes uh, you get steered toward, steered toward a at a younger or age. Arrested into is really what you might say. Okay. Stop trying to make up for being wrong on the last one. Chris, 24. Hey. Hey. Uh, buenas noches. All right. Who's the smart one here, Chris? Hey. Uh, Dr. Drew, actually, probably. Uh, Christ's sake. Most educated. Hey, um, the reason I was calling. Okay. Um... I probably need to be honest up front, lest somebody hear me on the, on this show and go, hey, wait a minute, I know that guy. I work for one of your affiliates, so we'll just put that out right up there. Uh, but I listen to this show every night, okay? Which one? Oh, WWJM. Oh, the big, uh, 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 Wumpum. The big, uh... <laughs> now, see, w now, Adam, I thought you'd have a list there in front of you, and you'd be like, bam, right on it. Oh, hi, oh, I don't know how? Yes. Yes. Out yes. In, uh, yeah, the Buckeye State, Columbus. Yeah, uh, uh, no, Zanesville, actually. Uh, Zanesville. We're, we're our own place, man. Hey, you know what's really weird, Chris? What's up? Uh, the theater troupe, uh, the Acme Comedy Theater uh, that I was involved with for many years out here, mm -hmm. the uh, founder and a good friend of mine and a couple other guys were from Zanesville, Ohio, oh, and came out here to do comedy. Wow. Okay. Yes, good friends, good guys. I like all Zanesvillians. <laughs> Uh, well, I do, too, obviously. What's All going right, on, Chris? Chris? What's the deal? Uh, well, you know, I listen to you guys every night, honestly. Every night you're on. Every, we hear the show, uh, you know, all five nights. And I honestly have, have quit watching TV altogether from 10 to midnight just because you guys are better. Thank and, you. You know, uh, I do, I do want to say up front, you guys, you guys are, are you're doing the Lord's work here, okay? You're, you're doing good. Uh, a couple of months ago... Don't, don't puff Adam up any, any larger than he already is. Uh, I'm already running for God next year. <laughs> hey, uh, I'll, uh, uh, can you register to vote for that, or do you have to have some sort of funny hat? Uh, hey, uh, Chris? Yeah? You on the air over there? I mean, you on air talent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are? Yeah. All right, we got we to swap stations. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> we can get uh, on it. But what I was going to ask you about is, well, you know, and... and you know, you, if you listen to the show enough, if if you're objective enough, you tend to kind of turn the inside you guys have on yourself. Right. And use the show as opposed to sit there and going, <laughs> Adam said penis again. Um, but seriously, I was wondering, I, I just kind of vaguely remember reading or hearing something about this. You know how it is. Oh, I heard, read something. All right, all right. Stop qualifying. Right. What's your question? About fertility drugs. Okay? Yeah. My mom, I was born in 1972, obviously. My mom took fertility drugs for about a year to get me here. What drug? Again, I really don't know. I was wondering, do you, do you know of any particular one that, you know, that they found out years later was like, oh, wait, these kids are all screwed up. Uh, I think what you must have read about was diethylstilbestrol, which uh, increases risk of cervical cancer in the female offsprings. Uh, I don't know of anything that was around 24 years ago 
that uh, certainly would screw kids up, so to speak. Well, some of the like some that. of the side effects are uh, endless rambling. Yeah, <laughs> you got that one. <laughs> totally, <laughs> you're totally perplexed by that comment. I, I, was, I was trying to think of something more substantial to tell this young guy, and uh, all right, I had to listen to you instead. But uh, so don't worry about it. I mean, these days there's so much fertility treatment going on of various types, and thus far no no uh, uh, evidence that this causes any sort of problem. In the all right, so you're fine, Chris. Yeah. yeah, there's no problem. I'm sure you're the uh, king of Zanesville. And, uh, you know, don't... Listen, I, I, I've, uh, I've taken a lot of trauma to the skull. For playing football. Between boxing and football, yeah. I, I think I've had my uh, brain scrambled many a time. Yeah. But I don't start the show each night thinking about it, because then it would make me screw up more than I already do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Drew, sell the hell out of the next call. Uh, Roberta, concerned about her kid brother who's seeing an old man. Okay. Wait a minute. Wasn't that one of those third-party ones we didn't want? Yeah, want to try a different one? Yeah, that was the one I said we didn't want. Uh, it's up there. Uh, All right, we'll find out how old the guy is. Right. I'm guessing it's going to be boring. Right. Phone number for Love Law in 1-800-LOVE-191. I'm Adam Carolla. That is the good doctor, Dr. Drew. Uh, oh, boy, am I screwing up on my days. Uh, K's, K's Choice. Choice tomorrow night. The band K's Choice will be in the Love Line studio. All righty then, Drew. What's going on Let's here? go, Roberta. Yeah? Oh, really? I Hi. thought I didn't want that one. Uh, Roberta, you're 26. Hi. Hey. I'm, I'm afraid it is one of those other people. Uh, but go ahead. We're giving you a question. chance. Well, my 16-year-old brother told me last year that he's gay, and... You know, I don't have a problem with that. I, I'm there for him. Um, he hasn't told my parents, you know. That's um, fine. We kind of don't understand the rush to, you know, to alert the family, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think there really is a rush. I mean, it's just when he's ready to tell him. And, yeah, and right. And it's nice that he's, it's tremendous that he's got genuine support from you, so it's good. Um, he's, he's met a guy who's older than him, and he told me that, like, they're he, involved, they're, they're sexually involved. How old's the guy? 29. Uh, that's, uh, that's a little weird. And I'm un understandably very concerned. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh... I'm really wondering if, you know, I... <laughs> If I should get involved, um, he's, he's my baby brother. Mm -hmm. Is that, uh, was he uh, ever abused in any way? No. Not not that I, I'm aware of, and, and I really don't. I mean, he, he tells me everything. I think if he was abused, he probably would have told me that. Mm -hmm. How's Dad? My father? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, the, uh, the dad from uh, My Three Sons, uh, Fred McMurray. Oh, well, no, not exactly like that. I mean, you know, our family's dysfunctional. Uh -huh. In what way? Oh, mom's, you know, um, kind of a codependent. And dad's what, an alcoholic? Was. Was an alcoholic. Yeah. He's in recovery? Well, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how, how long ago did dad get into recovery? Mm, I guess, well, I was about, yeah, I guess about 10 years he's been in recovery. And is it possible that he did something to uh, your brother early on? I seriously doubt it. Is it possible that because your dad was not available and things were a little chaotic, that your brother might have turned outside of the home and been a good victim for somebody? Um, I suppose. I mean, I've been... I myself have been in relationships where, you know, I was I, victimized. Mm-hmm. We, we well, just, because that's what it is. I mean, when you're 16 and you're dating a 29-year-old... I don't uh, care if you're a zebra and a giraffe. You know what I mean? It, it's not that he's gay. It's this 29-year-old and a 16-year-old. I don't get the uh, well, zebra... I get the zebra reference. That's mulatto. Uh, giraffe. Uh, no, I'm just what, saying... Just, the that. point is, that people, people want to take issue with the fact that we're talking this I'm way about, about homosexuals, but... I, I, you know, the twenty-nine-year-old is abusing a sixteen-year-old. That's it. That that's it. Twenty-year-old, the sixteen-year-old is is abusing the sixteen-year-old. I don't care what so the really sexes think are. That this is a case of like. It, to me, it's a oh, sign that he was. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's a sign that he was abused by an older male, as far as I'm concerned. 
Yeah. In in some capacity. I mean, or or that he's just now uh, getting Acting himself ready to be yeah. abused. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know what the hell went on in his past, but the the deal is is, I know what his future is. I mean. 29, I, I, you know, I, I was 29 just a couple of years ago, and I think about myself uh, dating a guy who's in the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. oh, hold on, dating a guy. I'm a little Freudian slip there. Uh, dating a uh, young uh, woman, female. Who's in the tenth uh, grade, and that's uh, that's uh, recalculus. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's bizarre. Yeah. So, by definition, the twenty-nine-year-old is screwed up. So, oh, yeah. a predator. Yeah. Well, I I agree. I mean, I've met this guy. Um, I didn't know at the time that he was involved with my brother this way. Uh, um, is your brother living at home? Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes. Maybe there is a reason to tell the parents. Well, there's your reason. My reason is that uh, uh, to allow your parents to do some parenting. Yeah, that that uh, my brother's being uh, abused or he's in this inappropriate relationship. And, and I'm not, you know, in the, uh, incarcerating him at this point is not going to prevent him from uh, seeking out abusive relationships in the future. But at least perhaps if your dad really is in recovery and does understand how these things work, uh, <sighs> perhaps he'd be willing to get your brother some help. He's going right back on the booze when he hears this. <laughs> uh, hold on, uh, honey. Uh, while you're in the kitchen, uh, get uh, get the Jack bottle. It's still under the sink. Uh, 1979, I believe it was. I mean, oh man. Yeah. Uh, got bad news and uh, worse news. Uh, uh, your son is uh, dating someone who's 29. Uh, oh, really? That's a uh, uh, and it's a guy. Oh, uh, okay. Where's the booze? Oh boy, uh, Ken. 21. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Well, here's my problem real quick. Um, I was dating this girl for about four years, kind of, you know, first love kind of thing in high school. Then uh, we sort of broke it off more her than me. I never fell out of love with her. However, she just kind of, you know. What, what is your question? Well, let's call it all her. Okay. At any rate, she um, comes back into my life recently after four years. And uh, lo and behold, I have a daughter. Well, one of my other good buddies from high school who, coincidentally, I had just spoken to and, you know, haven't spoken to him for like four years either, says that uh, he remembers uh, catching her at a uh, renaissance fair that she used to go to and what have you with one of his friends. What's your question? Let me well, tell you something. Hold on. Let me tell you something about this renaissance fair, Drew. I don't know if you know what goes on at these renaissance no, fairs. They? It is, uh, it's, it's an orgy. Really? It really is. It's a bunch of uh, drunken people uh, eating a... Big, uh, big lamb leg and uh, sucking up the stout. Sounds like Disney World. Yeah, but it's it's Disney World for uh, for drunken hippies who uh -huh. like to who like to uh -huh. uh, you know don uh, the, uh, the 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 codpiece yeah. <laughs> or merkin every once in a while <laughs> and uh, go out and just get it on. I've never been to one of these things, <laughs> but I know what goes on. Uh, uh, whatever you say. A lot of wenches being dragged around by the hair. Uh. What the hell was that called? Five. Oh, five? Whoop, All right, one. hold on a second. Ken? Yeah. So, Ken, what is your question? Well, it, it, just real quick, um, like I said, when, when, when she came back into my life, I've only seen her twice since then. You know what? I, I'm going to get people get used to tonight. Just state the question, and we'll go back and fill in the details if we need it. What's the question? Uh, should I continue a relationship with her or not? Uh, she's kind of throwing herself at me. Do you want to have a relationship hand. with her? Well, yeah, but on the other hand, she's pulling with one hand, pushing with the other. Now she's acting like, you know paranoid and she doesn't call me and she do you want to have a relationship with her well yeah but the thing is is that uh, supposing that the, you know i have a daughter with her why I, don't you, know, you find out whether or not that's your daughter yeah if, if you do you're going to have some responsibility there right of course but find, you know, find out if that's your daughter and certainly if that is that's a good reason to push you towards that direct that relationship yeah yeah all right so you got to find that out ken but but don't worry uh you guys will uh, live to break up again I yeah, know these there's things. a lot of ambivalence here in this woman and her uh, chaos that she needs in the relationship. If it, if can create some stability, so create chaos. Uh, relationships that go back and forth eventually go back again. Yeah, we don't need to hear. You know, we don't need to hear. Uh, you know, as a product of a normal spontaneous vaginal delivery, uh, <laughs> full nine months term, and uh, and <laughs> uh, we don't need those details tonight. Uh, I was uh, playing uh, Louis the Thirteenth uh, at the Renaissance Fair. <clears throat> uh, it was a wistful summer afternoon. The sun was at about mid position oh, in the sky. 72 degrees. Uh, Wind out of the south, southwest. Barometric pressure coming in about uh, 68%. John, oh. 
You're 20. Uh, all the calls have been like that tonight, right? I, it has been the uh, night of uh, useless information. Mine, hopefully, will be good information. All right. Um, like I've been dating this one girl for about six years now. And um, I think just about two and a half years ago, we started having sex and whatnot. We took our relationship that much further. Um, I let her know how I feel when you become most intimate with somebody, you share something that you won't share with anybody else, and that's masturbation. Mm -hmm. I share it with her. She refuses to share it with me. How could I get her to possibly even consider it? Uh, you want her to masturbate in front of you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Women are much more uptight about this than uh, guys. Really? I'm convinced that if they put guys in a zoo, eventually they would just start masturbating in front of uh, a wh hordes of Japanese tourists uh, taking pictures. I'll do it. I love, uh, honey, come here. Look at him. <laughs> There's a little... Uh, He's masturbating. Uh, yeah. uh, get the, uh, the high-speed film, would you? This guy's really going. Uh, stand back, everyone. I think he's ready to go. You describe me to a team. Uh, right? Please, uh, do not toss him any pornography. His feeders do that at uh, the end of the day. Are you sure she does this even by herself? Um, yes, she does. She's admitted to me that she does. She doesn't do it often, but about once a month or so. I, I don't know that you're going to get her to do this. If she's not comfortable doing it, she's not. It, and, and she may resent and feel uh, uncomfortable and angry if you force her to do something like that. Well, I don't force her. It's like, I mean, we'll be getting into it. We'll be petting whatnot, and I'll be rubbing her clit or whatnot, and I'll say, would you like to take over? Mm-hmm. And that will just... I mean, she goes ballistic. It's like you're, uh, you're, in, the, you're in the pilot seat, but you uh, toss it over to the co-pilot once you get enough altitude under you where you know it's not dangerous. Pretty much. I'm trying to get her to take over so I can go take a breather. John, is this, uh, is this one of your first women? Um, for me, no. I've, I've actually been with about three or four others. Mm -hmm. But I lost... I mean, I've done other than... I've. She's the first I've ever had sex with everybody else. I just did extreme heavy petting. Uh-huh. See, this is what's called your experimental woman. Mm -hmm. All guys have this uh, somewhere. Listen up, Ann, because I'm sure you were someone's experiment at some time, <laughs> and it probably went terribly awry. But this is what guys do. Guys uh, spend years thinking, my God, what would it be like to be with a woman? I mean, guys actually have bizarre fantasies, and, and they're not as, uh, as scary as I'm going to make them sound, but they have these fantasies about, what if I had, like, a female body that I could do stuff with? I, you know, I'm not going to go out and kill anybody. I'm not going to go dig anything uh, up from the morgue, but wouldn't it be great if, like, uh, one of my sister's friends during a slumber party just passed out to such an extent that I could actually, like, uh, probe and pick and find and learn and, and, uh, and, and do all this? This is, again, a, a great example of how different men and women are because uh, men really don't change that thinking about women. Uh, they to keep thinking. They, they kind of put a person into that, but they still think, God, wouldn't it be great if? Wouldn't it be great if really I... To this day? Uh, yeah. That's the way men are, yeah. Uh, guys, say, I mean... W Adam... You still think about women passing out? I'm still waiting party? for you to fall asleep in the console there, so I can go over there and cop a field during a commercial. <laughs> but but there. But the point, uh, hold the on, point don't is laugh, that, Mike. You too. But the point is, there is a an objectification that has sort of a biological base to it, where the guys are just interested in parts and things and the physical, visual, tactile aspect of the of the person, physical person, without the person. Right. Uh, there, there is the men have that. Women don't have that, really. And this is why uh, guys are more prone to wanting to uh, move things along in an experiment. I mean, a guy with his first woman, when a guy reaches his first woman, like a guy will have sex, let's say, 16, 17. But a lot of the time, a guy does not get to his first experimental woman until 20, 21, 22. What, the what first is, woman the that says, woman? All right, uh, baby, I am all yours. Uh, give me a beer. Do with me what you like. I love you. I trust you. Uh, whatever you want to do, uh, get the video camera. Uh, you know, put the surgical glove on. Uh, there's a there's a tub of uh, water soluble lubricant. Uh, is there any questions? Uh, because I'm going to answer them. Every, most guys usually run into that woman somewhere along the way, and I'm not talking about some kind of bizarre, sick uh, medical ritual. But I'm talking about that one that just lets you do a little more than you ever got to do in the past, and. When a guy gets this woman, he just wants to do stuff, and he wants to experience everything. And he, he wants to watch her masturbate, and not because uh, he needs to see a woman masturbate, because, but because he's never seen a woman masturbate. He's never been with one who'd let him be there while he did it.
you know, it's not a huge uh, physical turn on for a man to see a woman masturbate. I mean, it, it, it's it's way down there below intercourse, below oral sex, below a lot of stuff uh, for me. Check your charts. Some men really like that. Yeah. yeah, but they they really like it. But believe me, if this guy had a girlfriend that did nothing but masturbate in front of him when he was 18, he would have got it all out of his system and he'd be on to uh, sodomy with this one. And that's when the guys start probing around the rear end, by the way, with these women. Oh, my God. I get to, I get to poke someone in the butt. I'll start with my finger. This is what guys do. <laughs> this, is what, uh, this is what the whole butt thing is about. It has nothing to do with pleasure. Now think about that concept. Think I, about where you're I'm, putting I'm your... I'm trouble keeping up with you your, straight your, away Your here, penis yeah. is like a, your greatest gift as a man. It's like a trophy that you cherish, and you're going to rub it in someone's poo. This is not, you would not take the Heisman and put it in someone's ass. Uh, by the same token, you wouldn't do this with your penis unless you found someone you could experiment with and you're just looking to push the envelope. Your penis is your trophy? Your penis is your trophy. Uh, for me, it's more brain? of a plan. Not guys, not young guys. And this is why guys, uh, when they're older and they've been married for 15 years and they're 38 years old and the wife goes, okay, just a quick thing. I'm going to watch TV. We'll get it over with. You're done experimenting. You've been there. You've seen it all. You've smelt every smelt. You've so heard you every sound. do you still want it at that age? Or are you seriously over it? Do you still want what? All the poking and prodding. You want the orgasm. And you want possibly the intimacy, and you want the sexual contact, but you don't want all the things you've checked off your list in terms of the experimentation thing. Right. You know what the butt love's about. I mean, you, no one who's married... The scavenger hunt. You've right, been right. There. You've gone yes. door to door. Yes, you've got it all. <laughs> <laughs> and when you... Uh, no guy who's been married for 10 years says to his wife, oh, would you master... Come on, masturbate in front of me. It's like, uh, oh, you're masturbating? Uh, honey, uh, go in the next room. I'm trying to concentrate here. Uh, am, I, am I right? It's the same thing. The woman, the chick gets out of the shower, walks passes the guy naked while she's drying his, her hair. He doesn't even look up from the crossword puzzle. This is what happens. You check stuff off, off the list. He wants and, to see and, her do it. And you lose, your, a, you lose your will to live, too. Yeah, oh, there's that, too. Yeah, you've been beaten down like Drew. All right, uh, more insights into... Um, the uh, male sexuality as it pertains to females when we come back. <laughs> our uh, liquid-like substance on your thigh and uh, you just uh, have no idea where it came from. All right. Uh, phone number. Uh, forget about the phone number. You ready to move on here, Drew? Yeah, let's go. Katie. Hi. Hey, you're 13, you little muppet. Yep, I sure am. What's going on? Um, okay. I just want to know... How you can, like, before you get into a relationship, know if it's going to be bad or good. Got to kick the guy right in the nuts. No, because I've had, like, all... If you're 13 and you were abused in your childhood, it's going to be bad. That, that doesn't matter. I'm just saying, that, that's, a, that's a way of predicting whether or not it's going to be bad. If you're attracted to somebody 13 and you were had a horrible past... Well, let's say you weren't it's abused. It's going to be bad. If, if, it's, if you're not abused... Wait, wait, if you're attracted to someone? Were you abused? It doesn't matter. I was just curious. Well, uh, were you abused? Do I have to answer that? Well, I think you did. Yeah, and you you asked the question. I mean, that's we're answering how we're answering it. How the hell did you know she was abused? Hmm. Just a sense. Really, you got that sense, or yeah. you're just making the answer? Uh, no, I just uh, just a sense that uh, I don't know. Hold on, let me let me say something, Drew. Yeah, that has nothing to do with you, Katie. Uh, uh, we're doing that vibe thing on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, don't wear that turquoise shirt you're wearing tonight. Why? Because uh, I only have one shirt that's uh, worth a damn. It's this color. It's that one. Every time we go out, we both wear the same damn shirt. Well, it's the only shirt I have. All right. All right. So stop wearing yours. All right. All right. Okay. Katie? Versace died today. We know that. Uh, Katie, uh, so, so what we're saying is that if you're attracted to somebody and you have, you know, sort of untreated, uh, even abused or had some kind of uh, atrocities perpetrated against you in the past, you're going to be attracted to people who are not particularly good for you. So, so you're saying like every single relationship? No, I'm just no. predicting. It's just 13. for a little bit. Yeah, but, what happened to you, Katie? I, it uh -oh. doesn't matter. Well, it does to you. It, does. no, it doesn't. I don't care. Oh, yeah, that's I, trouble. Yeah, I, what? Yeah. Uh, well, who, who, your dad? I, I don't 
Oh, please, Katie. Come on. Who are you talking to here? I'm talking to Adam and Drew. All right. Here's your big chance. Adam, been... I saw you the other day. You went on hold for 94 minutes. Where'd you see me? At a hotel. At a hotel? Yeah. What hotel? What hotel? Hilton. What Hilton. city? Um, Orange County. Uh... See, I just got back from California. Oh, I Are you see. in Orange County? No. No, no, Adam. See, I called like two months ago and I said how much I loved you. Uh-huh. And I, my dad walked in, so I had to hang up. I wanted to meet you, and you said you were going to meet me at Arby's. Uh-huh. Was I there? No. Oh. But I saw you anyway. Where was I? Well, I work at the Arby's in Orange County, so uh, if you, you come in, you can see me. They usually have me in the back. Uh, mayonnaise, boy. No, you were at the Hilton. You were wearing a yellow shirt. Uh, wh- how long ago was I at the Hilton? Two days ago. No. Well, I know I did, so. He's not been out of Los Angeles. So I, I, I try wait. not to go to Orange County. Why not? And you don't own a yellow shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has three shirts. No, not one of them are yellow. I, I have three shirts. I'm wearing two of them tonight. <laughs> and you, you, know, my, you know my three shirts. Yeah, you don't have a yellow uh, This shirt. one now will be called the uh, urine shirt number one. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to know what the number two shirt right, has Katie, on. Katie, go ahead. Uh, what, what is it that worries you about this relationship? Why do you think it might be doomed? This one? Yeah. Nothing. I'm well because all the relationships I've had are really bad. But at one time I had a good one. And what happened to that? I like messed around on them. All right. So that and that's this is what, me. this is what we're saying, Katie. This is what we're saying is that, that you've been abused. You will have difficulty hanging with the relationships where the guys are not abusive. You'll mess around. You'll create chaos. You'll sabotage them. And the ones where the abusers are there are going to be doomed relationships because those are abusers. No, no, but I'm just saying, how can you get a good one? Like, see a good mm, one. Katie, why are you? have you been in so many relationships at age 13? How many relationships can you be in? I mean, did you start dating when you were 11? or? <laughs> no, just this past year. Okay. Well, and Katie. Yeah. So what are you, in the uh, going into the ninth grade or something? Eighth. You're going into the eighth? Yep. How far uh, have you have you been with a man physically? Yeah. You've had sex? Close. Close. Okay. Um, where's your dad now? Is he around? He's in Las Vegas. Oh, he is? He's with my mom. And who's taking care of you? Hey, my brother got almost got arrested tonight. Hey, who's taking care of you? My brother. Oh, the guy, the guy with the record? Katie. Yeah. If, just answer me this question. Has your dad stopped doing whatever it was he was doing to you? My dad? Yeah. Who was abusing you? I don't talk about that. Yeah, you better start. Or this, or you're going to have a tough life. Uh, not really. Oh, believe me. Believe me, you will, Katie. Come on, you hear all these calls, don't you? Well, see, this is my last night. I'm going to listen to you guys because I got too obsessed with you. Uh, oh. So after tonight, I'm never going to listen to you again. Okay, that's fine. But uh, you don't have a... Uh, she doesn't have an Arbitron diary. Do <laughs> Katie? Yeah. Uh, let me just... Uh, seriously, let me talk to you for just one second, okay? Okay. Okay, because uh, we do care about you. You understand, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, who was it? That uh, did I don't did want things to, talk to you. About that. Well, who was it? Is, was it a neighbor? Was it a friend? Was it dad? Who was it? I don't want to talk about that. Why don't you want to talk about it? Cause. Okay. Well, then we'll just hang up. Okay. Okay. Katie, uh, get get some help from uh, yourself, kiddo. Get get uh, take care of Katie. Don't think Adam, you're, you're funny. Don't think you're going to uh, find the answers in these relationships because that's not where the uh, solutions are. Um. Yeah, you know, I, I call. Let me give you. What, can I give you a phone number, Katie? No. Please. No. You don't want to. You don't want to try to get some help for what's going no. on. No. Why don't you want to help yourself, Katie? Because I don't need help. Um, we did, we just took a vote and we decided you did. So why don't you want to help yourself? Well, see, I know myself more than you know me. So. No, that's where you're wrong. It's, it's sad, but. Uh, <laughs> And I wish I didn't know so much, but uh, Drew and I both know what's going on and where it's going. And that's why we're concerned. Okay? 
Why don't you trust us a little bit? Can you do that? Yeah, but I I didn't call to like. I know, but th this is what it's turned into. So w why fight it? Okay. Well, you don't. There's nothing to fight. Well, we're just trying to help you out. That's all. I uh, I I know we're running late. Uh, 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 Katie. Yeah. Just close your eyes for one second. Are they closed? Yep. You're 13 years old. Yep. You have a, a long life ahead of you. Okay. You have uh, some things that are going to happen that I can tell you are going to happen, that Drew can tell you are going to happen in your life, in your long life, and they're not good things. What we'd like to do is see if we can stop some of those things from happening right now instead of waiting until they happen. Do you understand? Bad things happen to everyone. Right. But why should you get the lion's share of the bad things? Why don't you just get a couple of bad things instead of all of the who, bad things? Who said I was going to get all the bad uh, things? I did. Believe me, Katie. Well, I'll, I'll cope. Okay. Uh, 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 good luck to you, Katie. Thank you. You're going to need it, sweetheart. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Uh, 13 years old. Why is it so important for people to have kids? If that's what they... If that's, what is your plan, by the way, when you're uh, parents of Katie? Uh, what, is, what is the plan that you had uh, when you uh, brought this uh, person onto the planet? Abuse one. Uh, if it wasn't so sad, I would laugh uh, because I love your abuse farm line. But, oh, she wasn't... Oh, oh, oh boy. If she survives whatever uh, the hell that she's going to have over the last uh, next 10 years, uh, hopefully she'll get some trouble. Uh, she'll get some help if she survives. It, it's uh, denial and entitlement and uh, All right. lack All of right. trust. Katie, no kids. No kids, please. Thank you. All of my most sensitive areas. All right, uh, I'm going to go home and concentrate on not having kids. Uh, Drew, I want you to get rid of the ones you have. <laughs> I'm going to concentrate on not letting them get abused. Okay, you focus on that. Uh, so, tomorrow night, Case Choice will be in here. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed here certainly opinions.